Hello everyone, back to you guys, second video. So really late with today's second video. The reason is I've been hanging around waiting for the midday uh, GFS run to uh, come out because we are seeing a lot of um, uncertainty today in relation to next week's weather. So the story over the last few days, of course, has been that we're going to get a colder plunger there sort of Friday to Saturday. Uh, and that's nailed in. Uh, we deal with that in the 5 day forecast. So if you want to see about that, check out 5 day forecast. The video here is here on the home page. Just scroll down the page a bit. It's above the stow desk. And there's also a written version which you can get to from, bottom, from the top of the page. So that's all straightforward. We get to Sunday, and that's when the uncertainty is creeping in. Uh, yesterday's model runs were trying to break down very quickly the ridge that's going to be bringing, or the blocking feature, that's going to be bringing this initial push of cold air. If we go back a few more days, the idea was that this blocking feature would actually unleash quite a cold and prolonged block spell of weather. But over the past couple of days, the models have reduced that uh, away. And yesterday, uh, it looked like the Atlantic was probably just going to steamroller through next week and bring us quite a spell of wet and unsettled weather. Things have changed a bit on that uh, with today's model runs. So I'm going to talk you through what's going on in a second. It's all rather complicated, but suffice to say, we have still got a lot of uncertainty in relation to next week's weather. And I'm going to start with the Arctic Oscillation because I think this is primarily what's causing the uncertainty. So again, this is the Arctic Oscillation Observed and Forecast chart. The black line here tells where we've been with the Arctic Oscillation. The red line's at the end where the GFS Ensemble's forecasting the Arctic Oscillation to go. It's just an index that's reflective of the state of the axis. It's not driving anything. It just tells you what the axis is doing over the pole. So where we are right now is virtually at neutral condition with the AO. But look what GFS Thomas are doing. Very shortly, we're going to get a plunge in the Arctic Oscillation, going very negative down to around minus 4 on the scale. That kind of ne negativity is telling us we've got a large blocking feature developing over the Arctic. Because remember, it's always the weather that's driving the index. So if the index is going negative in that sort of fashion, it must be doing it because there's a large area of high pressure block that's setting up over the pole. And when you get blocks over the pole, uh, then it kind of throws all of the computer models into uh, turmoil. We also know, and we've talked about this in the previous videos, we won't go over it again today, but uh, um, we know that we've got the uh, stratospheric temperatures also at odds with this. We've got quite a cold stratosphere over North Pole at the moment. Uh, and when you get a blocking feature over pole, typically you have a relatively warm stratosphere. So the troposphere and the stratosphere are fighting one another. They are um, sort of at odds with one another. And we are going to get this blocking feature over the pole. Put the two things together. That's what's causing so much model uh, confusion. So we're definitely going to get this blocking feature setting up over the pole in the next few days. We can see that from the Arctic Station observed and forecast chart. The NAO is also going negative. Again, black line tells where we've been with the NAO. Red lines are the M where the GFS Ensemble's forecasting the NAO to go. We're slightly positive with the NAO right now. Again, as the Arctic Oscillation goes negative, so GFS Sobel's forecasting the NAO, the North Atlantic Oscillation, to go negative as well. Both indexes will be in uh, negative territory, and this could start to set up something quite cold if the block interacts with the jet stream and areas of low pressure in the Atlantic in a fashion that can allow cold to push out of the pole into our corner of the northern hemisphere that's the critical factor exactly where the blocking feature is sitting to get the cold and how that interacts with the jet stream and everything else temperature anomalies are starting to cool down now uh so this is a temperature anomaly from the 15th to 23rd of november you'll notice scotland is now being forecast different to yesterday have a cold of an average week southern parts of england is a little bit milder than average norway is going uh, very significantly colder than average for the uh, week ahead. And many central parts of Europe are also being predicted to go a little bit cooler than average. And these may well train colder 
uh, more colder over the next couple of days. So we'll keep an eye on them through the rest of the week. Precipitation anomalies look like this. Very significantly drier than average across France, Spain and Portugal, but near normal rainfall for the UK, going wetter than average across Ireland. Well, I'm going to talk you through all of the GFS runs we've had so far today. So this is the midnight run. Uh, came out first thing this morning. There's the northerly that we get from Friday to Saturday. So this is the midnight Sunday. And we've got cold northerly winds coming in. Could bring winter showers to northern Scotland. The main thing over the weekend is that there is likely to be night frost. The midnight run of GFS by Monday still has that ridge through the country. Bringing a lot of dry and fine weather. Then on Tuesday, the, mid the midnight run started to bring low pressure in from the Atlantic. But notice this large blocking feature that we have here across uh, Greenland. A uh, much stronger block uh, than was being predicted by the GFS model yesterday. So as a result, this area of low pressure and its weather front that's coming up from the Atlantic on uh, midnight on Tuesday is really struggling. You can see that from the elongation in the ice above there. It's having a real struggle. Actually, a stall is taking place with this front. So the cold air is to the north of it, much milder air is to the south of it. And along the front, there's some uh, heavy rain. As that front tries to dig into the cold air to the north, not inconceivable that there might be something wintry going on across Scotland and North East England early next week. The stall continued with the midnight run of the GFS up to Wednesday. Actually, the cold air is starting to move back a little bit from the northeast by Wednesday. Southern southwestern areas are quite mild, but you only have to go um, sort of this area uh, to find that uh, stalling weather front. And anywhere north of that has got cold air digging in uh, from the north. There's the upper air temperatures showing that the cold air is there, lying through the central swathe of the country. And milder air, even by Wednesday, really restrict to Ireland, Wales, and southwestern parts of England. So that's a big, that was a big change on the model runs that we was having yesterday. Now, eventually, the uh, midnight run of the GFS did get there with the mild weather, and by Thursday next week, we're pushing much milder and wetter southerly southwesterly winds in across the country, and then that uh, takes us off and running into a very unsettled, wet and windy spell up to day 10, which is Saturday the 25th of November. That's the midnight run of the GFS. Now have a look at the 6 o'clock run. And we find, again, we've got high pressure through the country on Sunday with the cold northerly winds coming uh, down. So we have this cold weekend. That's extended the cold over weekend. So I think we probably keep it mainly dry, cold and frosty through to Sunday night. Uh, so um, that's a change because yesterday, even as early as Sunday, we we're starting to see milder weather coming back in from the Atlantic. To Monday, so we're still under this ridge, probably still dry and quite cold then. Uh, Tuesday, here comes the uh, frontal system trying to introduce that to out, those outbreaks of rain. That frontal system is uh, getting further north here than it did on the midnight run. It is still uh, stalling a little bit, but it's doing it a little bit further northwards and eastwards. And then by Wednesday, uh, then we're off and running again with this spell of unsettled weather. So the six o'clock run pushed the Atlantic through quicker and uh, we bring wet and windy weather in as early as Wednesday next week. And then that takes us to day 10 in an unsettled wet and uh, windy type weather pattern up to day 10, Saturday 25th of November. The very latest GFS run is the midday run. That's what I've been waiting for. That's why today's video is a little bit late. I want to see how the midday run was dealing with things. Uh, so again, we're going to start at the weekend. Uh, remember, this is the very latest. It's hot off the press. It's only just come out a few minutes ago. And uh, this is a Saturday, so we've got the cold air coming down from the north over the weekend with high pressure dominate, dominating. So it's going to be a mostly dry uh, weekend, especially so for the west and the south. There could be some uh, showers in the north, perhaps. And I reckon it'll be quite cold as well. Watch out for night frost. This high pressure is dominating through to Sunday. Monday, that high pressure is still there, dominating the weather, so it stays mostly dry and cold into the start of next week as well. Low pressure starting to try a move in from the Atlantic. But look at this, Tuesday, uh, when... 
the last two GFS runs were moving low pressure on its attendant front into the country, albeit quite slowly. The midday run of the GFS actually just keeps us under this ridge of high pressure. Now, the upper air temperatures are probably lifting up a bit with this ridge, but um, it would actually be quite cold still, I think, down on the surface. So frosty conditions on this run of the GFS continuing into the middle of next week. Notice much of Europe as well getting quite a northerly shot of air. So quite cold air is running down into much of Europe. Now, by Wednesday, we're starting to try and move the weather system in from the Atlantic. So that possibly brings something a bit milder and wetter to Scotland, but for England and Wales, still close to this ridge, I don't think anything has happened particularly to stir up the air, so it might still be quite cold, even to the middle part of next week, down in the south. And then things get dramatically different by Thursday, we're starting to re-establish, we've gone beyond um, day 8 by the way, but we're starting to re-establish uh, high pressure around Greenland and Iceland, so we're having another go at trying to get the winds into the north, and actually we do pull that off, as we get up towards day 10, we've got a deep trough, uh, area of low pressure sitting in the Baltic Sea, and it's turning the winds into the north and the northeast. So we actually go quite cold uh, with the midday run of the GFS in the second half of next week. And overall, that is quite a cold week uh, next week from start to finish. It's only around Wednesday, but it turns a little bit less cold, and it does so primarily uh, up in the north. The south will probably still be quite frosty, and then we return the winds into the north again. So all three of today's GFS runs are significantly different, both from one another and significantly different from all the GFS runs we were seeing yesterday. And this is only for next week, so not a huge time away. Uh, and it just tells you how uncertain the weather pattern is uh, right now. By the way, beyond that, stays generally quite cold, even as we run up towards the end of November with um, the GFS. I can show you the very latest GM as well. This is the Canadian uh, model and again what this one tries to do this is more like what the midnight uh, run of a GFS was showing so it has this blocking feature up around Greenland we established the cold air over the weekend then early next week we're trying to move the Atlantic into that cold air but not particularly successfully so this is how things look on Tuesday with the GEM where there's a weather front sort of in that area Cold air is pushing that weather front southwards uh, and the jet stream and the milder conditions are going down uh, there. So we're almost on the cold side of the uh, weather front there early next week. That could bring a mix of rain or possibly something a bit wintry uh, through the early part of next week. Then we go through to Wednesday and the wind is probably going back into the north again with the GEM. Now this is not the best model but it is kind of similar to what the midnight run of the GFS, what I showed you a few minutes ago, uh, was trying to do. Uh, we're moving up towards day 10. That's how we end up at day 10. Still looking quite cold, really. These areas of low pressure in the Atlantic are not getting through uh, in that sort of direction, as we were seeing within the model output yesterday. Actually, they're being pushed down in that sort of direction, which overall leaves us... Still really pulling the air in from a north northeasterly direction. So the GEM is quite cold and there are there is the potential for something a bit wintry coming through there with the GEM. Finally, I can only show you the midnight east of the air because it won't be out for another couple of hours. So you want to know what uh, the latest East Center UF is showing, uh, you'll have to check out uh, my Twitter feed. I will tweet about it around 7 o'clock this evening. Uh, so that's uh, twitter.com uh, slash Gavin Partridge. So this is how uh, things are looking or were looking on the midnight run with the ECM WF. And this one is milder uh, through the middle and early part of next week. The Atlantic does push through quite easily. Uh, so we all turn milder and wetter by the middle part of next week. But then the second half of next week, it was swinging us back into cold uh, conditions again, probably just a cold snap, but a little bit similar to what the GM midday run, which I just showed you a few seconds ago, uh, was showing. That takes us to day 10 with the E-70F, where we are quite cold, uh, albeit winds trying to get round 
into west, southwest again. I don't think we, that takes us to Saturday, 25th November. I don't think we should be looking beyond the early part of next week because I don't think we've got uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday sorted out yet. And if we haven't got that sorted out, then Thursday, Friday, Saturday up to day 10, Saturday, 25th November, there's got to be a lot of health warnings associated with that as well. If you are hoping for things to be cold, I know quite a few of you watching this video are, um, then today's model runs are quite a big step forward uh, in the possibility of uh, maintaining or retaining uh, cold weather through next week. But the detail is very, very sketchy. There's a lot of chopping and changing, a lot of intra-run variation going on. So... Uh, it's forever thus that this kind of thing happens when you throw a large blocking feature into uh, the weather system over the pole. It will always cause a lot of model confusion, and that's what we're seeing playing out here. If you go all the way back to uh, the videos that I did in the winter of 2012-2013, which was our last cold winter, and it's the first year... I was doing uh, weather videos. Uh, we had a lot of this going on throughout the whole of that winter. Uh, model reliability was very, very poor. Uh, and there was lots of chopping and changing from day to day and even from run to run. Such as we're seeing here is just what happens when you get uh, when you get a lot of blocking going on. The uh, models can't handle it, uh, and so reliability will crumble. And that's what we're seeing playing out here at the moment. So our next instalment will be tomorrow, where we'll see what's happening then. They may swing back into a mild regime. They may start to run further with keeping things colder. So uh, I think it's on a knife edge what's going to happen next week. We'll keep you updated as ever. And uh, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.